Ladies and gentlemen, one and all, humble members of the TSC family, male greetings and welcome back to Let's Play The Witch's House episode number 14 yes indeed together with your very host the shadow cookie once again the time has come to talk about the story of this magnificent experience in great detail as i already mentioned and announced last time and what you are about to listen to happens to be my current theory which i boldly pieced together from the many diaries, books, and other sources of knowledge Viola stumbled upon over the course of her journey. Without further ado, please allow me to begin. Enjoy! Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Ellen, who lived in a quiet, humble house together with her mother and father. She was a terminally ill child, who, despite daily both physical and mental suffering, loved her parents just as all little children would. But nobody... Neither them nor friends loved Ellen back due to her condition, thus bringing about a terrible life of solitude and emptiness. However, it didn't last all that long, for one day young Ellen could no longer endure her torment, and out of hatred murdered both her mother and father with a knife, as well as burning down their precious house, setting it ablaze. She disappeared shortly afterwards from the eyes of the public, and was declared missing without a trace. Her old life had vanished, but would soon be replaced by a new one. Deep inside the large nearby forest, bloodstained Ellen, while wandering around aimlessly and purposeless, suddenly encountered a demonic entity who offered the young lady a tempting deal mortal souls in exchange for magical powers powers she could use to pull her dying existence back out of the dark abyss and into the warmth of the life-giving sunlight sacrificing those more fortunate than herself in order to selfishly gain salvation stealing them away even from the world Ellen couldn't have cared less. They had never loved her. Why should she spare them now? Those who received true love from their parents day after day. No, these old friends of her would make delightfully innocent sacrifices indeed. And so she began to lure the boys and girls into her new retreat, a large living house filled to the brim with otherworldly creations, its only function to consume and offer gathered souls to the demon. Many children found their tragic ends within its seemingly endless corridors, dying horrifyingly disturbing deaths, void of mercy, thus allowing Ellen to maintain her powers as a result, all the while spreading rumors throughout her part of the world. Don't go into the forest, son or daughter. The evil witch who kidnaps children, supposedly, lives there. Eventually, after weeks, months, perhaps even years, Ellen discovered that merely killing other humans was no longer enough to satisfy her needs. 
whether she had run out of so-called friends or suspected that the demon lacked the ability to cure her deadly illness. She was growing impatient, felt the desire to go above and beyond. A new scheme was needed to speed up her plans and fast. To this very day, nobody truly knows what exactly Ellen ultimately decided to go through with next. Something even more horrifying than killing other human beings. But an unspecified time after her realization, arguably even before, yet another young child, the motherless 13-year-old girl known as Viola, stumbled upon the sinister building all by herself. Feeling curious about who the owner might be, her fate however, would become an entirely different one. Both she and the infamous Witch of the Forest met each other face to face and became friends. Who would have thought? Regular visits of Viola soon turned into a natural occurrence and brought both of the female individuals closer together. Could it be that the 13-year-old child felt so sorry for the witch and her predicament? Whatever the case may be, everything seemingly changed from that day on. What happened? Did the child actually reach through to the witch and her heart? Had Ellen forgotten about her selfish intentions and usual sacrifices? For the sake of changing herself back into a kind and generous person, only to finally gain a real friend who felt concerned about her unlike everyone else she had ever known? The answers are still a mystery, but one day something strange and unexpected happened on Viola's way towards the witch's house. Regaining her conscience in the middle of a colorful flower field, she quickly discovered that the enchanted forest had without a warning decided to trap her for no apparent reason. Worried and scared, the girl proceeded to enter the nearby house of her friend in search of answers only to be welcomed with open arms by violence, nightmares, and death. She had become just another victim of Ellen's true colors. Is that so? Our story loses itself within the countless fragments of old folk tales and legends here. And how it really ended? Nobody knows. Did Viola survive? Did she become one of the countless sacrifices for the demon? Perhaps her role played an even bigger part in Ellen's supposed new scheme. Maybe it was all a big misunderstanding. Maybe the witch had nothing to do with it and actively tried to save her friend, her one and only friend, from the powers of the house. All we can do at the end of the day is guess, assume, speculate, and theorize. One fact, however, is clear. Crystal, to be more specific, the finale will not be a peaceful one. Ladies and gentlemen, my very name has been The Shadow Cookie. Thank you all so very much for listening. Next time, the top floor 
of the witch's house.